All right, here we are, mate. Cam McAvoy sitting with uh, my good friend, Michael Clements. Michael's 46th birthday today, Cam. Yeah, Very that's huge. Podcast, that is huge. Happy <laughs> birthday. Thanks for uh, taking time out of your day on your birthday to do this. <laughs> Mate, this is a very special one, especially to join Brett and yourself. And um, obviously, I've been a big fan of yours and watching, you know, what you've what you've gone through and where you are now. So really excited to hear what you've got to share with it. So um, yeah, yeah. yeah. get stuck into it. Eh? <laughs> yeah, no, like just from my perspective, Cam, I want you to know, like, look, you know, there there was a time where I was the fastest swimmer from one end of the pool to the other in Australia, and, and I was very proud of that. And there was a time where he was the fastest swimmer in, 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 the, in the history of the world in the 100 freestyle, right? So, like, him and I both have had moments where we've, we've been that person in Australia. Um, but today, we're kind of coming at this as, as fans of yours, man. Like, we're just so – like, Michael and I have had so many conversations about you just privately. <laughs> it's just like we're just, we're just fans and what you've done and how you're doing it. Um, I just wanted you to know that, man. Thank you. Appreciate that a lot, actually. And I mean, as you know, because you have been where I am right now in the sense where um, like currently I'm, I'm living the current reality of, of, of this Aussie swim team, all that type of stuff. But I'm walking in the steps of those who came before me and, and you guys paved that pathway. Um, there's almost like that non-genetic ancestry that you kind of follow along, you adapt on yourself and you, you take that forward too. So yeah. uh yeah i mean it couldn't have the the, the long chain of aussie swimmers it, it couldn't have couldn't have been paid without those who came before yeah 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 and no, absolutely well said there's yeah, a lot of people that came before us and yeah. then and then many that came after as well you know we 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 think of an Eamon sullivan Eamon Eamon kind of like yeah. was guided by michael at a, at a period of time too and then went on to do his thing so, so yeah yeah long long list of aussie sprinters uh mick mick Kyle Chalmers is doing a, a brilliant job himself in, in the 100 as well right now. Like, what a what a swim he had as well. So, to, to see both you guys at the same time, you dominating the 50, him dominating the 100 the way you did is a, is a really proud moment for us, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, for, for Kyle, again, to to win that 100, which is the only major he hasn't won, and, and then yourself to you know to to come back like you have it was uh yeah <laughs> well you kept us busy on the phone that's for sure so um yeah. but yeah pretty um so yeah obviously this is a um a monumental year and it'll be uh interesting to see how you how you're approaching it and and yeah. want to see how you how you've managed to come to where you are now yeah yeah but, yeah for yeah sure. i mean the beauty in it too as well is like men's freestyle in oz is is on fire right now like you got me in the 50, Kyle in the 100. You got Shorty winning the 400 in a 340, mm. which is insane. You got yeah. Lige, you got world champ last year. So the depth is there, which is, uh, yeah, unreal. Um, and then mm. you've got Shorty meddling in the eight, the 15 in, in historic times, too. You've got the Aussie men's four by one with the gold medal mm. again. It's been yeah. what, 12 years since we won that. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, you don't, don't need to say it, but the women's side is obviously on fire. They've been on fire for a long time now, but. It's really good to see the men, the men's freestyle and Oz do what it what it's yeah. doing right now. Yeah, actually, yeah. Cam, can I ask you because it on. sounds like, um, you know, sounds like you, like you contribute a lot of your current success and where you are, you know, to to this to the team, to the Aussie swim team, and we obviously fed off that when we were on the team, and you know, some of the likes of Thorpey and Hacky and mm. Susie, and you know, when there was success in the team, it bred success, and how. Mm. Your your kind of your journey, you know. First of all, why you walked away, and then um, and then obviously coming back. How much did that team environment and what type of team environment helped you to get back to where you are now? Well, it's like a it's like a field phenomenon. I, I was talking about that over there, um, where day one happens, and I, I think we won four of the five gold medals. Uh, we had a world record in the women's four hundred. We had Shorty going three forty. Uh, we had the, the women's four by one free break the world record again. And then the men's four by one step up and get a, the, the gold medal after 12 years. And that type of opening night just uh, virtually sets the scene and, and the ball starts rolling. And uh, like, like I said, you, you kind of, you, you lock into that momentum, uh, that kind of energy that's around the team. And, and it makes it that little bit easier to, to know that, 
Uh, so many people have been behind the blocks at the Worlds this year. They, they were able to step up, do what they needed to do. And you, you spend, what, three-ish weeks with them beforehand. You see them, mm. uh, that they're very human side. Um, so you, you see them go from just being very normal people, doing their own training sessions, preparing for it, to doing incredible stuff behind the blocks. And it, uh, it, it makes you back yourself a lot more. You, you feel like uh, mm. you, you've watched these people go from here to here and you back yourself that you can do exactly that as well. And mm. yeah. what, 53 was day day seven? Day, mm-hmm. Yeah, day seven. So, I mean, I had a whole week of watching them do some pretty incredible stuff. So it's definitely something that, that you can lock into and, and, and carry forward. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was a memorable uh, you know, seven, eight days of swimming, mate. It was, it was just crazy. And then, like you said, that day one, I, I was having flashbacks to day one in Sydney, 2000, when yeah. and Thorpe did what he did in the 400. And then Michael and those guys, Michael came out, broke the world record, leading off the relay. And then that relay went, it was just very reminiscent of that moment. I was having flashbacks to that. So knowing kind of what I went through there, just watching them do that. And then, and I was sitting around for seven days waiting for the 50 free too. So just, just in terms of that, I, I know you had the 50 fly, um, but like, you, you know, your focus was the 50 free. Is it, is it difficult in that circumstance to like really enjoy that moment, but know that you've got to keep your focus and keep your energy levels for those, those seven days, right? Yeah, man, it, it sucks. Uh, that was the first time I've had to wait that far into the competition for from for my main event um like I, I, every other year it's been day one four by one free move into the hundred free and so forth but that was the first time barring the the 50 fly that i had to wait so long mm. um i remember the day two the morning of day two after the night of day one being in the stands watching everything um i i was exhausted in a sense like I, you were on such a high watching the team do do incredible stuff uh, you go to bed, it's the first night in that type of atmosphere and you wake up and you're, you're pretty tired. But, um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't – I definitely prefer to race a lot more during the week, but that's mm. just how it is right now. Um, I, I don't know how Ben's done it for the last, what, decade or so, waiting until, mm. uh, what, day day six, day seven, day eight. But um, mm. it's definitely a skill in and of itself. Um, yeah being able to manage the energy levels through that, manage mm. what you need to do in the water, the type of speeds you want to hit in preparation for that, yeah. uh, but also be very calm in the lead up to it. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I, like I'd say I was, I was probably most nervous before the heat as opposed to the semi and final, probably right. because of that long lead up to it. Right. Mm, yeah. No. Yeah, understandable. I've, I've been there, mate. I, I, I know that feeling of sitting around and waiting and, and that nervousness for that for that first hit out, but um, I do want to go back a sec. So Michael's going to kind of touch on yeah. some some yeah. earlier stuff. Mate, look, obviously we'll come back to we'll come back to the, your your great week of, of swimming. Mm-hmm. But I I sort of want to you know take take you back to and find out you know why you actually walked away from from swimming for over a year and you know what led to that decision and then what ultimately brought you back mm-hmm. as well and then I guess what um, motivated kind of this change, change in identity, change in events, change in mindset. Um, yeah, just talk us a little bit about, yeah, that, that kind of transition and then the comeback. So for that, uh, probably have to go back to, say, COVID 2020 uh, in March when things went into lockdown. Um, that was the first time I've had longer than roughly three weeks off in in 18 years um, mm-hmm. from when I was about nine uh, at Miami um, I probably had I, I had yeah pretty much three weeks off a year year in year out and so that COVID break was the first exposure to I think I had seven months in total out of the water then mm-hmm. um, and then obviously prior to that probably from 2017 each year uh, progressively I got slower in my in my racing. Um, mm. I was putting in, I guess, what you'd call overall more and more work, more and more volume. Um, I was, I felt like I was trying to turn heaven and earth, trying to figure out maybe what's going on outside of the pool is is uh, affecting that. Maybe the sleep, maybe the nut- nutrition, all that type of stuff. Uh, mobility. Uh, like I went through phases where 
um, on top of the 10 swim, three gym, I was going to basically like a, a yoga session every night. I went, went like 31 yoga sessions in 30 days, just trying to get hmm. an impact on that mobility, trying to, to just right. shift things and try to get things to realign again. Um, but yeah, I mean, the more, the more I voluntarily tried to dive into just the seasonal program and everything that, that was given to me, uh, with respect to the 50 and the hundred, the, the worse it got, uh, as I got older. And, and so like, there's only so many years you can take where you, you, you're rocking up to nine, 10 swim sessions a week. You're doing at, in that phase, anywhere between 30 to 50 K a week, three gym year in, year out. And, and you're getting progressively slower every year. So from a mental point of view, um, it, it, it absolutely sucked. It was, it, it's tough to do that. Uh, it's tough to spend so much time uh, not only going through all of that work, but really, really wanting to rectify it. The way my my character, my, the way my head works is just constantly trying to figure out uh, mm. why it's happening, new ways to kind of get around it, to realign everything. Um, that, the added difficulty to that was uh, like I've, I've always had, I guess, my ideas of different ways to train, um, different things I wanted to experiment with and, and work on. Um, and that was, there was never any space for me to, to, I guess, not only develop that, but have the space to, to execute it, see, see what yeah. would happen. Um, and so, yeah, COVID came around and, and I was just extremely burnt out. Um, I think swimming came back probably in Australia, I think four ish, four or five months after the, the March lockdown. But, um, I immediately didn't want to go back. I was extending that off. Um, mm. in that period, I actually got into just normal gym. Um, when that started, I was 72, 71, 72 kilos in March. And when I came back in, uh, late October, I'd hit 81. Um, mm -hmm. but the gym I was doing, it was just like your normal, I guess, vanity gym. It was like one day would be, uh, biceps and back the next day, triceps and legs and like, just <laughs> yeah, doing, yeah. Yeah, we know all about that. All about that. <laughs> yeah, I, was going, I was going for that physique. Um, <laughs> like you've seen photos of me during pre 2020, like I was, I was a stick. Yeah. Um, it's just the amount of, I guess, aerobic loading, uh, I guess maybe my genetic makeup, I just found it really difficult to put on any muscle while maintaining the overall workload. Um, mm. And so, yeah, in that 2020 break, it was, it was starting to get too late into 2020 where if I wanted to make an attempt at Tokyo, I had to start to go back um, pretty, pretty soon. Uh, and so mentally I wasn't really ready to, to get back in and, and go through the process, but I really wanted to, to try and qualify um, and so really what was the, uh, the, the Kickstarter for that was Dave Morgan, who I was training with at the time. Um, I think he dropped like a 23, two or something in, in training. And it was a pool record, uh, at that time. And he told me about it. Uh, I'd put on what, eight, 10 kilos of muscle. Um, and basically my, my competitive side came out and I was like, all right, I'll try to beat that now um and so i did a did a dry land warm-up didn't get in the water put my suit on dave was there timing uh we filmed it as well so we could send it off to um uh tom veeve and 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 nezzy at the time to get a proper time um and my first strokes back from seven months off was a 53 and i went 22 8 um Ooh. and to put that into comparison in February in 2020, just before the COVID break at Vic States, what we're almost three quarters of the way through our Olympic prep. And I went 23 0 at Vic States after like tr mm. training the house down in the sense of volume. And so, mm, yeah. point two from doing absolutely nothing in the water, just gym. Um, and that was kind of the first insight as to, okay, um, there's something interesting here. I really want to figure it out. Um, Let's see what happens. And what happened after that was I went to Nezi, went back into the water, uh, and up until Queensland State in December that year, uh, I just trained three times a week. Uh, every session was like two, three k. Um, it was just what twenties, thirties, forties. I was doing a lot of it with Grayson Bell there. Um, and within two months, I was twenty-two one, forty-nine one. 
Uh, I was virtually doing what I was doing in season uh, under the full workload, but I was doing, relatively speaking, nothing um, in terms of volume. But I was doing, I was probably doing a lot more like race pace than than what I was before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then after that Queensland state, um, I guess uh, people came up to me and were like, "Okay, you swam really quick off not doing much. Imagine if you took this speed now." and you trained how you used to going into Tokyo. And I was pretty reluctant for that, uh, but for like four months up until April, uh, I, I went with it. Uh, and then every month we had a comp, and each comp I got a little bit slower, a little bit slower, up until April where I went 23-0 and a 53 again, and I think like 50.8 in the 100 free at Nationals there. Didn't even mm. make the final, um, which was just absolutely disheartening. Uh, yeah, it, it sucked. Um, and so after April, um, basically kind of pivoted and tried to do, try to go back a little bit closer to, um, I guess what I was doing at the end of 2020, um, it ended up being kind of half that half other stuff, uh, which effectively kind of left me in no man's land in the sense of being properly prepared. Um, but by the time, uh, Olympic trials came around, I got on the team, um, nothing flash in terms of times technically felt not great in the water um i was just very lucky to get on that team and then went through to tokyo didn't swim well and was just so burnt out i was like right i gonna have what 12 months off i'm just not gonna think about swimming i'm just gonna go on do my own thing um do whatever i feel like doing and if if i if i get the need to want to come back into swimming in the future i'll do that if not i'll just move on Um, and so I had 12 months off from Tokyo pretty much, um, after maybe like three, like a couple of weeks of just doing really nothing, um, starting to get pretty bored, wanted to get moving and stuff again. So, uh, got back into gym, um, working on just strength and mobility and all that type of stuff, uh, got really heavy into rock climbing, um, which was fascinating that that world in and of itself is, um, yeah, very far removed from what I was used to with swimming. Uh, like I, I consider myself to be pretty, uh, I guess, pretty strong in, in pulling move, like like weighted, weighted pull-ups. I've done swimming all my life. I walked into this, this rock climbing gym and there's a calisthenics move called the front lever where you're holding onto the bar, straight arm, and you raise and get your body out flat like that. Mm. and uh they were doing like their training session there it was like a circuit thing so i jumped along that was one of the circuits and like for the life of me i couldn't even do it with legs fully tucked um up to my chest mm. fully in a ball and then there's these guys who are they're shorter their 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 forearms are the same size as their biceps their sticks mm. and they're doing full front levers with with one finger each side mm. and it was a it was humbling very humbling and that was kind of the first one of the first insights to, I guess, what strength is and I guess the the ability to funnel strength into certain forms, certain movements, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that opened my eyes up. I wanted to really learn um, how they trained, why they were so good at what they did. Um, and then, I, again, with that, got really into rock climbing um, and did that for a long time. Uh, and then after that, uh, January rolled around 2022 um, and we put me and Maddie put everything in storage from where we we're living, rented an RV and went on a four week holiday down the East coast um, just stopping off here and there. We we're with uh, my dog too. That was, yeah, that was beautiful. That was really nice. <laughs> um, got to Sydney and we loved it so much. We we're there for three days and we thought, okay, uh, there's a really cool apartment in Balgala in the, in the uh, Northern beaches We'll apply for it if we get it. We'll move in. Um, if we don't, we'll just travel back to the Gold Coast, do what we're going to do. We ended up getting it. So we stayed in Sydney for eight months, um, which was awesome. It was a, that change of scenery was really good for the mental. Um, I worked at Anatomy in Motion, uh, AIM, in terms of gym. I was doing uh, a lot of work there under Vic Hawksley uh, and the programming they do, which is fascinating. It's really well done. Um, it was a mixture of kind of calisthenics, gymnastics, uh, traditional lifting, and I guess mobility and, and, and flexibility. 
um, which was just, yeah, fascinating. I, I learned a lot from, from my time there. Continued the rock climbing. Just to interrupt, at this time, were you thinking, oh, I'm going to, were you thinking about getting back to the pool or were you just thinking about just staying fit or you hadn't, you weren't really, had, you didn't really have an idea about, mm. you know, the future or did you already have, you know, a time frame in mind to, to get back in the pool or were you just kind of pretty open with it? So at first, um, it was definitely, uh, I'm, I'm not looking to touch water anytime soon. Um, but what I, what I couldn't help myself from doing is even right from, from when I was on the Gold Coast, starting rock climbing and all that type of stuff, uh, anything I learned, any, any new type of strength movement experience or anything like that, I couldn't help but try and refer it back to swimming and what that mm. would mean in the water. What, if I were to take that idea into training in free, sprint freestyle, what would that look in the water? What would this type of approach look? Um, I, I, I couldn't drop almost like a, a, the nagging need to want to relate it back to swimming. And I, I've, I've, virtually, I've had that the whole 12 months when I was out. And um, as that kept going on and the more I learned, uh, that was definitely probably the biggest clue that um, I, should, I definitely should get back into it when I'm ready, when I understand it more, when I know what I want to do. Um, and, yeah, it, the whole year I, I was referring it back to what would this look like in the pool. Mm. Yeah, and for, for me, hang on, there we go. Um, for me, as a sprint coach and somebody that dedicated their life to sprinting and, and trying to understand it, I feel like I have had an impact in, in the way that we look at speed and the way that we consider it. But um, knowing, knowing you and what you've done and how you did, I think that 12 months for me as, as a, somebody that um, truly appreciates speed I think that 12 months of your expo exploration is going to have a greater impact on the future of swimming than almost anything that we've seen previously in sprint. You know, the way that you're applying your intelligence and, and the basics of strength to what you're doing in the water, I, I personally think is going to revolutionize swimming, you know, and um, I'm so excited about it. And you and I have had these conversations personally of like, I, I don't have your intelligence. I mean, that's just the reality. You're a very, very smart man. You think about these things really well. And the way that you've kind of pieced this thing together and, uh, and applied it, like you said, over a 12 month period of like taking things and putting it all in this bucket and kind of figuring it all out. Ultimately, I hope that 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 12 months of work that you put together ultimately will be studied into the future and mm -hmm. tried to be understood by many, many people into the future mm -hmm. so that so that we can figure out well, well, what's the limits of speed in the water. You know, right, right now we're, we're stuck on 20.9, but for me, I'm like, we, we should be thinking 19.9. You know what I mean? And, and this is where I think this 12 months that you had this journey is going to really change the way we, we train, I think. Yeah, and for, for listening to, to your story, Cam, that it's, you know, I, I think we can all relate where we've gone through tough periods in the sport and, you know, again, like you, you mentioned, trying to repeat training sessions that you've mm. done in the past, compare your past times mm. and always benchmark against things that you've done before. And I think the fact that, um, yeah, I think the fact that it just proves how important our mindset and our you know, mental health is to, to swimming well. Like mm. if you have the right, in, right intention and if you have, you know, if you're feeling happy and if you, you know, if you can be patient and take time off, how important that is to swimming fast rather than just doing the 10 sessions, the mm. three gym. And, you know, like it, it just, your first 50 back, for example, that's, that's just a perfect example. So I think the, the combination of, you know, accumulating this knowledge, having the break, refreshing your mind, it's just, you know, that's, that's what stands out to me, you know, and it's, and it's, yeah. and it's great because some coaches are very reluctant to give swimmers breaks to, go yeah. and you know find themselves <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. um so that's you know commandable to you and your team it's yeah. really good yeah thanks and yeah like i think imagine imagine you so I've, at, at that point in time i'd been on the national team for a decade been swimming since i was five i've been swimming in proper squads since i was 11 under dennis um i've, I've spent a lot of time in the sport and so i think 
like a way to imagine it is like imagine fresh out of uni, uh, you, you get an entry level job somewhere. Um, you're starting to learn the ropes. You're in that job for 10, 15 years. But if you're never given the, the space or the freedom to professionally develop, to move up, to, to, mm. to be able to be more responsible over what you're doing, to apply the things you're learning to what you're, you're doing with your work, try to expand what you're doing and all that. Uh, if, 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 if it's the same for 10, 15, 20 years where you just rock up, you do the same thing, you go home, uh, like in swimming where over time, if you, if you don't have that evolution from, say, late teens, early 20s into your mid to late 20s where you're, 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 you're a pretty huge expert at what you do by the time you've been swimming that far, uh, you've got so much knowledge about your own body, how you react to everything. If you get to the point where you're, say, 25, late 20s and, and you're still rocking up to training, just going through the conveyor belt, like like do, going through the motions and mm. you just do what's on the board. You go home and that's it. Like there's only so much time you can do at that point. It's like if you're in a job for 15 years doing the same thing without any ability to go up, mm. you'll hate it. Eventually you'll want to move on and find something else. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cam, I can completely re- relate. I mean, my, mm. my initial retirement, my first one was the same, the same thing. You know, I, I had injuries. I tried to get back. And when, you know, I tried to compare all my test sets to, you know, previous sessions. And, um, and then the kind of the, when the times didn't match up and you couldn't perform and the frustration in me mm. kind of just grew and grew. And I started resenting the sport resenting all this hard work that I've done previously mm-hmm. and it and it actually yeah I mean I made a very quick decision to retire but it's you know in, in hindsight the way you've done it you know being able to walk away and learn and then come back is obviously much we're, we're glad we're glad you yeah. did <laughs> but it's like yeah it's, it should be uh yeah it's you know have some great lessons from this so. well I think in this time too Cam not only did you start thinking and, and piecing it together in your own mind but you started documenting some stuff too right where you where you started to put kind of some hypothesis together during this period is that right yeah like I, I was so I when it got towards the end of that 12 months um I had a lot of ideas and it was just real scattered. So I just uh, attempted to put my thoughts coherently together. Uh, one of the very, I guess, early pieces of that I sent off to you. Um, it's definitely like moved on since then as well. Um, but yeah, I, pr- I pretty much, I got, got to the point where I think I had covered such a wide range of things outside of swimming that I thought were still in a way related to the sport, just mm. changing the context of uh, that sport into swimming. Mm. Um, and yeah, like, I think it's, it's important. You almost need like a, like a, like you have models of, of track and field, you have models of swimming, you have models of weightlifting, gym, all that type of stuff. Every sport has their own philosophy, I guess. And it's almost like getting like a, like a meta model of models. So it's like, you can look at one sport. You can look at the context of that sport. Yeah, Elon Musk over here. You've got to lose half the crowd here, man. We're, we're, we're lost. <laughs> nah, it's, we lost. Just keep going. We're just saying that your, yeah. you know, your intelligence and insight into swimming, it's yeah. just phenomenal, you know. Like it's uh, – no, I don't think anyone in, in our sport puts that much thought and and detail into what we do so yeah. it's we're just, I just it's, yeah. um, it's been a lot of fun it's been a lot of fun but yeah. like okay so effectively it's like you have you have say track and then you have swimming um they're both different sports different philosophies but uh like at the, at the surface level but then at the deeper structure it's really it's it's human movement within a, a movement context within mm. uh the the act of running or the act of swimming and uh i think on the surface you can you can see a lot of differences but if you get down into kind of the deeper structure stuff um you can you can see a lot of similarities and you can you can kind of transfer what one sport has developed really well and apply it to another um you can do the same for say weightlifting and bring it over and yeah it's basically it's like being able to syncretize between between all the different sports and kind of Mm. seeing seeing the similarities of the deeper structure of, of really it's just human body moving through 
certain shape at, at with a given goal, like getting from A to B as fast as you can, for example. Um, mm. So, yeah, it was, yeah, it, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and I've, I've just had the time of my life figuring it, like diving yeah. into it, really. Yeah. So in saying that, Cam, let's, let's um, you know, let's, let's kind of bring it to the present moment. Like what is, in, in a broad sense, don't, you know, um, don't have to go in too much detail, but how, how does your training kind of look, look like at the moment and what is you know your uh, your principles that you work around with so i've got an answer um that hawkey's put out a while ago that i did while still in sydney um did it on any questions it was kind of the the breaking down of pretty much what what speed is in in swimming it's like you've got you've got your um metabolic energy systems you've got your force output you've got your power you've got your technique and then all of that together kind of feeds into being able to go from a to b as fast as you can um and it's pretty much breaking it down into that you you can you can then look at each one of those levels and they're all just different ways of describing the same thing which is just moving through water Mm. um and so i try and not only just I, i think at least in, from my experience, the large majority of viewpoint in swimming is to look at the metabolic level. Uh, and there's a lot of um, focus on that for, for good reason too. Uh, but I think with myself, with speed, taking or stepping out of that and kind of moving up that, that chain, looking at, say, the 50 freestyle as a, like a strength-based skill, for example, something like a, mm-hmm. akin to, to gymnasts on the rings for, for 20 seconds doing particular movements. They've got to exert unreal amounts of strength, but through a particular shape, a, a particular technique. It's the mm-hmm. same thing. It's just uh, cyclic in swimming with freestyle. It's, you have a shape in the water and it's just being able to, uh, have as much strength as you can exerted through the right shape. Uh, and mm-hmm. then in, in swimming, it's more important to have that shape there uh, perfectly because of the, the drag factors. It's, it's a different medium. You water, like you slow down a lot more if, if your technique shit in a sense. And mm-hmm. so basically, um, yeah, for speed, it's looking at it from as a strength-based skill. Um, so how can I improve my overall strength? How can I improve my strength in my particular stroke in freestyle in the water uh, and then after i have developed strength through through resistance training and all that type of stuff how do i then feed that back into being able to have that strength at a, at a, at a body weight perspective so that when i get up behind the blocks when i'm fully peaked i dive in and everything's just really well aligned at, at whatever is needed to move the body through the water as fast as i can as strong as i can in the in the best shape i can because like you could be you could be the fittest person in the world in swimming your metabolic capacities could be through the roof uh you could be extremely strong you could be jacked but all of that eventually has to be fed through the technique in the water that's the that's that's a window that all of that capacity can be fed and so if you're limited with your technique then like arbitrarily like you could have a massive capacity, but only 5% gets through in the 21 mm. seconds of the 53. Mm. And so um, and that explains why you have such a wildly different, uh, I mean, probably not so much 50, but 100 meter swimmers. You've got your tall, skinny guys like David. You've got 46.9 from Elaine Bernard. Um, and, and they all have the, roughly the same time, but they approach it in very different ways. And so, yeah, it's mm. just kind of looking at it through that perspective. Yeah. Cam, okay, as... Miss- as a hundred guy, previously, I, I think I mean you swam the two hundred obviously very well as well. But I think most people would identify you as kind of the as a hundred swimmer. That that forty seven one you did, I think, is is would go down as one of the greatest swims in history. It was just it was a beautiful swim. I think everybody can agree on that. Why didn't you look at this comeback as applying some of this knowledge to the hundred as opposed to the fifty? What was the choice between the fifty? Uh, well, I, I really want to. Um, the, so the initial plan was, uh, spend this first year on the 50, um, in my, in my head, I just wanted to get as deep into the 21 seconds as as I can. When I started, um, it had been four years since I'd gone 21 in 2019. Um, and yeah, it was really just, I thought it, it was much better to get speed first 
uh, mm. with Paris in mind, and then develop the conditioning around that speed um, in pretty much from now leading into Paris. Um, but because the 50 uh, surpassed pretty much what, what me and Tim were expecting, uh, and, and yeah, because it went so, I went 21.0, it's like, okay, um, I've done nine months of this type of work. Imagine what another 12 months of doing this type of work Will, will get me to if I can if I can do things right if I can compound the type of training I've already done um, and kind of pivot where I need to be reactionary in terms of how my body's responding to this type of stuff as I go through um, and really nail another good year it's like where could that go um, and mm. then on the other hand it's like if I wanted to try and see where I would be for the hundred then how would that affect my fifty um maybe maybe my 100 gets pretty decent again I, I go 47 again um but my 50 drops back to a 21 6 or something like that and then so i i could make two olympic finals but i could be fifth six seventh or, or something like that or mm. i double down on a 53 still race the 100 just wherever that lands it, it'll be um if it's good enough to help the boys out in the relay in a heat maybe or, or whatever it may be um that's great but try and nail the 53 and and just see where it goes yeah 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 mate. i i love it listen with with 21 o speed i i would think that you could turn around and at least get to the 80 meter mark it's scary. Scary. <laughs> it's, scary. It's, it's scary and it's, it's scary and exciting you know for <laughs> as in like scary how fast potentially this could be and also yeah. um and exciting for us aussies and yourself i'm sure yeah um but, um, you know, did you have any doubts in, in, in this process, like in the last, yeah. say, nine months where, you, where you've sort of just, like you said, you doubled down on the 50, yeah. you know, and you obviously had the 100, 200 background, you swam amazing 200s as well. Um, did, you know, did, at any pro time, did you sort of doubt it or were you like all in? Um, so, yeah, when I started up until, so I got back in the water first week of October Um as in doing this type of, of approach. I was doing a little bit of swimming before that, um, but it was pretty scattered. Um, so October, started back. Mindset was 50 and 100, but let's get the speed first. Um, two months Within two months, I, I hit that 22-0 at Queensland State and 49 two in the 100. Mm. Um, that was a good sign, especially the 50, because I was 22-3 in Tokyo after the, the prep I did there. And then 12 months off, eight weeks back, I was already quicker. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a good sign for the 50. The 100 was um, standard in a sense. Like I, I'd done that before in the same approach, like eight weeks back after mm -hmm. the seven months off in, in the COVID year. Um, and then two months later, uh, I was really fatigued. I'd done a lot of resistance volume, um, had that type of the same, same type of like neural fatigue, physical mm -hmm. fatigue you get from doing a lot of gym, but it was just water-based. Um, and I was able to repeat the 22 O. Um, in yeah, much less favorable conditions in a sense. So yeah. that point it was like, right, okay, if I'm that fatigued and I'm hitting 22.0, then I'm definitely pretty, pretty comfortably within the high 21s. Um, and that was pretty much the point when I was like, okay, uh, like, do we, do we continue this 50 hundred stuff or do we double down on the 50? Uh, a month later raced again in March in Sydney, uh, went 22.0 again with, more compounded uh fatigue and the hundred just didn't feel right in a sense um mm -hmm. and so yeah effectively pretty much after that we're like right we'll go re uh rest after that so yeah pretty much from march it was um doubling down on, on the 50. the one time that i started to go oh shit like maybe this maybe 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 i'm just stuck at 22 or something like that was uh, by the time I got to May, the Sydney Open, uh, when I went 21, eight for, uh, 21 for the first time since 2019, the week before that, I was just swimming horrendously in the water. Um, like I, I'd be doing like dive 25s, dive 35s, and I'd be, I'd be like 22 high pace in a sense, um, which, yeah, that was, a, that was a point where I was like, right, okay, um, maybe this isn't the, the best approach, so to speak. Um, but then in hindsight, that was, that was just when I was at my, the peak of the, 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 the fatigue of the whole season kind of adding up. Um, so yeah, I had a little bit of doubts as, as I went through, but, um, probably not as much as I would have originally thought. Yeah. 
Mate, you mentioned earlier um, Tim Lane, and, and I know the impact that he's had and guidance he's had with you. And, and a lot of that is basically, um, you know, identifying as someone who's part of your team but allowing you to be, um, you know, the person that, that is guiding the program and him being a mentor to it. And, and you know, he's obviously your coach in the sense of uh, what you're doing in the pool. But it's it's a different type of relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're you're a mature athlete who's got your own thoughts and ideas and, and plan on what you want to do. How how do you guys work together um, to accomplish that that goal? So it's it's extremely collaborative in the sense where um, I came to him, uh, I had my ideas of what I wanted to do, and really I was just looking for for the space and the freedom uh, and the assistance to be able to 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 do them, see where they went. Um, and so Tim was by, by far the, the best place for that. Bobby Hurley put me in touch with him, um, who I'm really thankful for. Um, and how we work is pretty much, uh, I'll have my ideas. I'll have the, I'll have the upcoming block, uh, upcoming week, um, have that in my head or write it down. We'll meet up, we'll, we'll, we'll go over it. Tim's got deep knowledge, um, from his what eight plus years or something in, in the US. Mm. Uh, a lot of it was uh, access to resistance training, very new stuff uh, from an Australian perspective, very new stuff. Um, and his knowledge on that type of stuff went, went a long way. And so um, I'll, I'll be like, look, this is what I want to do. Um, this is what it looks like. He'll, he'll say, okay, what if we tweak this? What if we did that? Um, or he'll be like, yeah, that's sick. Let's go. Um, and then as we go along, he keeps an eye out on energy levels, technique, how I'm responding, and then he can he can really guide um, the pathway through like a whole block in that sense. Um, and then, like you said as well, just the, the, the psychological guidance in, in just well-being in and out of the pool. Uh, where I was when I first came to him compared to where, we, where, he, where he helped me get to, even before all uh, any of the 21s even just throughout the season when we were just having the time of our lives just creating something and seeing if it works and and then tweaking it and moving on from there um it's it's gone a long way and he's he's definitely got a really really good ability to understand i guess how i operate understand what's best for me and 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 when Mm. i'm kind of veering off from that um and this season and the end results would be absolutely different if he if he wasn't involved in it in any way mm, yeah um, i mean we can relate we both had an amazing trainer and jeremy oliver and also one of the uh and you know from that point of view someone who can think outside of the square which then um but i wanted to know like did you have any i wouldn't say i get i guess resistance yeah. or any questions from within the coaching community or i yeah. mean i know Ryan Taylor's very accepting of of you know forward thinking athletes and but was there any um, you know how, did you feel that there was you know did you feel like you were supported uh, from a from a face to face point of view I didn't come across anything but I definitely heard that the the general viewpoint was effectively I've chosen this method because I didn't I didn't want to do the K's anymore I didn't want to do the work. And so mm-hmm. I was just trying to find a shortcut around um, and, um, among, among other viewpoints as well. Um, Ro, so I do a lot of my sessions out at um, QAS, at, at Technical Pool here in Brisbane. Uh, the, the Swimming Australia offices are right there. So Ro was dropping in periodically, um, checking out with how things were going, asking kind of the process of things right from, from pretty much the beginning. So um he was really good in that type of stuff and and he was just like right but you do you uh see where it goes um i'll back you wh- whatever the whatever the outcome is it is and yeah we'll just mm. see what happens so that was really good um in terms of finding the 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 space for being able to do this approach and and to have the freedom to do it the way that that me and tim have been able to do that would have been tough if tim wasn't there i don't think there would have been many places in Australia uh, that would have been as, as accommodating. Um, but, yeah, I, I think ultimately, despite all of that stuff, uh, being where I am right now, 
Um, and, and like I said, even before the end results at Worlds and at Trials, just the, the change in my relationship to the sport just grew so much to the point where it almost didn't matter if it didn't work out. It was like, right, if I do this, if it doesn't work out, great. I've got closure. Uh, my ideas, they were just kind of, they were there. It didn't, didn't matter. It was good that I got to do it. I can cross that off. I can move on now. Um, in a way, it's good for the sport. I can let people know, right, this approach doesn't work. You don't need to do that. Um, or on the other hand, if things did work well, then it's like, right, cool. Uh, we had the ideas. We did it well. Things worked out really well. And now let's see where we take it. And so regardless of the outcome, I was just in a, a much better position uh, with my relationship to the sport. And mm. yeah, that, that just goes a long way from, from the rest of my career and, and beyond as well. Cause there's so many, I, I hear so many stories of, of swimmers who, who retire, they move on and they just hate the sight of a swimming pool. Mm. And mm. it's, a, it's, it's a shame because swimming is such a huge part of everyone's identity at an early age in their life and it's almost like a part of their like their personal myth in a sense of their of their life that through line of what makes them them and so yeah, yeah I, I, it's just it's a privilege to be able to have uh reconciled that yeah you know you know what gets me mate is like you know there's, there's a very famous set that that we all know and and have all done quite honestly mm -hmm. it's there's 3100s right on 130 it's one of the most famous sets in swimming and uh, i I think it was probably established somewhere in the early 90s, you know. Mm, yeah. I'm not exactly sure who came up with the workout, but it's a very famous workout. It's still repeated to this day on a weekly basis. We're talking 30 years on, Cam, and people are doing 3100s on 130, just recycled garbage over 30 years. I mean, and that's the that's the most famous sentence from, so, oh, you do that. Oh, let me do that. Let me do that. Let, let me do it better. Let me do it harder. Let me do it more often. And it's just this crap idea of just beat down, beat down, beat down that we just pass on this knowledge of like, hey, I did that. You should do that. And and the thing that I'm loving about what you're doing and 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 kind of exploring is like, we've got to be better than that. Like, we've got to move beyond that. Mm. We've got to look at things differently. We can't just be doing the same thing. To me, it's like grabbing someone by the hair and that's not good for us because we don't have any. But if I was to grab you by the hair and just beat your head up against the wall and say, uh, you know, I hope we get a different result this time, you know, it's like yeah. that's what we're doing in swimming really, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, for, definitely for the 50, maybe for the 100, um, who knows beyond, but it, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like you think of a, a, a traditional 20, 30, 40K per week season especially if you're let's say just the 53 you're doing 30k a week um you spend say if you have 11 month season you spend 10 10 10 and 10 months in one week doing your general aerobic prep you do your mm. speed work here and there you do your threshold you do your 100 pace for over swimming your 200 pace mm. um you spend most of the year doing so much volume but if you were to calculate the total volume of the actual 50 meter race speed that you get and hit throughout mm. that period, it's mm. probably, it, it, it could be zero in that sense with, with, without exaggerating. If, like if you're wanting to go sub 21.5 and you're, you're hitting 30K a week, it's probably not likely you're hitting what you would split at the 35 at the 40 meter mark for a 21 five in training under that load. Mm. And so you go through your whole year, you do this type of great general prep to be really good at doing 30 K a week. Mm. And then you get to taper and it's the first time in 10 months that you're actually able to hit the intensities and the race speed that you want to do in a race, which is great. But that's the first time you've hit that, in in 11 months which means that it's not really a taper it becomes a new training stimulus and so you go into the the world champs the olympics or the trials or whatever and you're not peaking off a block of of race speed work that you've done you're going mm. in under a new training load that's different that's higher intensities you've never hit before and so your body has to adapt to that before it actually gets to race and kind of slingshot yeah. out of that and go better yeah. And so yeah. if that's not long enough as well, then you get up behind the blocks and you're just kind of in no man's land in a sense. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think it's obviously, I mean, this relates to why, you know, people that race a lot you know, mm. in constant races uh, do so well because it, it you know, it, it 
well, it multiplies that volume of you know, of that you know top end speed. You know, it's basically the best type of training, which um, you know is is been proven. But um, like, I wanted you to kind of dismiss this myth that has been going around that mm. uh, well, we've heard whispers that people have been saying that you're you know it, you're swimming so well because of your background of the 100 and 200 and the great work that you've done and mm. um you know so we just wanted to hear from <laughs> from your mouth <laughs> you can dismiss uh, that myth <laughs> i mean it, it doesn't make sense because a very common thing that gets thrown around is if you have a week out of the water it takes what is it two weeks to get back to it or something like that mm. uh who knows how long that's been around for but i mean <laughs> i had 12 months out of the water um going into this season so under that idea i would have been insanely detrained so a lot of that <laughs> wouldn't really be there at all um even if you go back through the covid period so really i hadn't re i haven't really done too much traditional aerobic stuff since march 2020 so it's been a long time out of that um the the only thing i can think of that i could maybe say that type of work helped was that I just had a lot of exposure to doing freestyle. So I had more time to develop what I think would be a good technique. But even in that, the, the volume that I've done over my life at all speeds relative to what I did at 50 meter speed is so much larger than 50 meter speed that the technique I did with the 50 was just mm -hmm. overshadowed and, and lost in all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I probably wouldn't even go as far to say as that helped. Um, I, I do definitely would have an increased capacity from a metabolic point of view from so many years of doing that type of stuff that could help in this type of training in terms of uh, recovery between session to session, but that has absolutely no impact on my ability to go uh, a 21.5 split to the 35 six times in training or something like that. Like mm. to actually hit the 50 meter speeds that I want to hit in training um mm. it, it, yeah it's you're comparing apples and oranges it's just like I, actually yeah yeah Tra track cycling is a, is a great example you know they're uh, they're sprinters on the track they mm. would warm up for two to three hours to do two sprints at race pace mm. you know and it's and i've seen them do it and it's it, mm. it's and the process they go through to mimic their race conditions just yeah. for two sprints. yeah no you know? I, I had the same experience with maurice green a good friend of mine, John Stephenson, I went to visit him at UCLA and he was training with Maurice Green after he'd won the, the 100 in, in Sydney 2000. We went there for a week and that changed my perspective on, on sprinting completely. Yeah. You know, um, what I saw him do, he basically he'd come into uh, he'd come into the gym, they'd lift for an hour and a half, then he'd go to the track and they'd, they'd loosen up for about 45 minutes. And then, like you said, they'd just run race pace sprints, you know, four or five of them and then cool down. So they had, they had like a three hour workout, you know, beautiful um, work in the gym, translating it over to the, to the track. And they, they did that five times a week. That's all they did, you know, five, five sessions a week. And then Saturdays was an active recovery. Sunday was a, was a passive resting recovery. And then they come back and do that, that cycle again. Mm -hmm. And, and these guys were just hitting race paces in practice. Like I'd never seen before, mm -hmm. just speeds at, you know, lightning speed. And, and it's, it's similar to what, you can, you know, the philosophy is of, of like hitting specific paces in practice, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like this whole, the last nine months I've done by far the lowest overall volume I've ever done, but probably at the same time, I've done by far the largest overall race pace speed that I've done. Mm. Um, and so it, it, it's, it's, it's just that um, idea of specificity and, and time within that. And, for even from a technical point of view, which in swimming is so important because of the medium we're in and everything, I like I believe you can't work on technique unless you're actually at the race speeds you're doing at that. Mm. Uh, like no drills, like the drill is literally just try and hit a 21.5 pace 30 or something like that or whatever, whatever, wherever you're at in the season. And the more exposure to that that you can uh, develop and, and, and take on board, the, the more you're going to improve at what you're doing. Uh, like, like taking Usain Bolt, for, exa for example, I know it's a, you got the track running, you, you've got that impact to the ground and all that type of stuff. Um, but like what, 30, 30K for swimming a week, that's three marathons worth of swimming if you take the 10K. Mm -hmm. 
uh, would Bolt be doing 120k a week uh, while he's prepping for the 200 for the 100? If he's doing 120k a week for what? If he did that for 15 years before he decided to do the 200, would people go, oh, yeah, he only went 19-1 because he did 120k a week for 15 years? Or Mm. is it because he did race pace and actual 200 work and and proper sprint training afterwards? So, Yeah. yeah, I mean... It's pretty. It's also. Did you feel like obviously it's a different stimulus? It's a little bit more neural. You feel get a little bit more neural fatigue. And um, did you have? Did your body have to adapt? To, uh, did it take a while to adapt to that? Obviously, from going probably more strength and explosive based in the gym to then doing more explosive and strength based in the pool. That that transition. Mm-hmm. How how long did that take to to sort of uh, adapt? It, it took a little bit, but not as long as I thought. Um, my f- my first resistance session that I did, I'd never done resistance properly at all in my in my entire life. Um, and my first resistance session, I put two finesse shoots on the red and the blue, um, and it was just six mm-hmm. five cycle sprints on like two or three minutes rest in between. Um, I wanted to do more, but I could only do six, and I just broke down. Um, I got out of the water, I went home and I, I had a two hour nap. I was so neurally fatigued. I don't nap ever usually as well. And so the first three or four weeks of doing this stuff, I'd finish my resistance session. I'd go home and I'd have to sleep it off. Um, mm-hmm. but starting at say six reps, uh, six yeah reps of that, by the time I, that was October, by the time I got to January, February, it started to really be able to put a lot more volume on that. March, I really hammered the volume uh, on resistance there as well. And it really, it, you, you, the body adapts a lot faster than you expect. Um, and I'm, I'm like, mm-hmm. I've been doing gym my whole life. Um, it's, it's an element of that. So I've, I've had a little bit of a training age in that sense. Um, and I, I like to look at resistance sprinting as a, a like a, I guess, a velocity based gym in the water in a sense um and so yeah it's 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 a lot quicker than than probably what you'd expect yeah yeah cam i want to i appreciate this by the way you you digging deep into this stuff and look look look, to be fair we're we're an hour into this thing and i think probably (laughs) a a lot of people like where's the blueprint where's the blueprint i'm not we're not given the blueprint like this is yours we're we're a year out from paris man and the you you put in you know, like you said, over 15 years of work into being in a position now where you're the most dominant sprinter in the world. And not, you didn't you didn't win the world championship. You dominated the world championship. And like you've earned that. And and for us to come in here and say, well, give us the blueprint, I just think is is wrong and selfish. We're not going to do that. But I appreciate you, you digging deep into kind of, um, you know, what you are saying, what you are revealing. And if if you're smart enough and you're listening to this thing, there's so many things in here that you can take from this podcast yeah. and apply, you know, and then figure it out yourself. But the bottom line is what you're basically saying is, hey, I didn't just do what I've always been doing. I've, I've tried something completely different and I'm having extreme success oh, yeah. with it. Um, I do want to touch on the psychology a little bit because yeah. I think that's important too. You, you look, we've, we all hear rumors about ourselves and what, what we can and can't do and things like that. I think I think the thing that was kind of circulating about you is that you couldn't win the big one, right? Like you couldn't you couldn't finish the job under pressure. I mean, not only did you did you do that, you dominated the world um, a few weeks ago. So it was like you went prelim semifinals, you got faster, 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 and and you win this thing by half a second. So just in terms of the psychology, how was that? Uh, for you to overcome as B- well. Bouncing back from the 50 mm. fly as well. Which, yeah. You know, I don't know how you felt about that. So yeah. just run us through the week quickly if you can. Yeah. So 50 fly um, felt awesome swimming. Um, and then I had one of the world's worst touches. I pretty much literally finished like that. Yeah. Um, the only thing I could think of was because I'd, I'd watched the 0800 fly finish um, more times than I'd probably done uh, at speed fly finish. So mm. I was at that point and it was like, right, that's the only thought that went into my mind. Phelps did an extra stroke. I'll do it. Um, it was horrendous and put on a lot of time to what it would have been, uh, which was a shame because I was 0.04 off going into the semi, which would have been nice to do another swim. Uh, but we got the, the the data back and up until the 45, I was pretty much on the same pace as what I what I did at the trials the the five weeks before. So um, from a swimming point of view, it felt 
I, I was pretty confident because that hadn't changed. Um, and I was more confident because I'd done a lot more work on freestyle between trials and uh, worlds as well in terms of that final bit of prep. Uh, but in saying that, I was definitely most nervous um, going into the heat of the 50 um, because I guess, yeah, the, 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 the trope, the, the self-identi- self-identified belief of, okay, um, mm. it's been up, at, up until that year from, from Rio, it's been pretty much every time I've gotten to that international stage, it's been really hard for me to, to get close to a PB, get close to what I did at the trials. Um, and so I was like, right, okay, everything is so wildly different this year. The approach is different. Uh, my mental headspace going into worlds was very different. My confidence in what I could do in the water was different, but it was mm-hmm. still, it was still there. It was, it was lingering as if like, okay, um, what really is that, so to speak? Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, most nervous for the heat, got up uh, after my dive, just locked into my stroke and, and it just flowed real nicely, felt real strong. Uh, 21.3, which I was real happy about. It was faster than my old PB quick as I've been internationally by half a second. Um, and after that, it was, it was virtual. I just felt peace in a sense. Um, mm. I remember going into the, the semi just really peaceful with where I was at really confident. Um, I think a lot of that was the confidence in just what my approach to training was. I'd done so much race pace over the last, the last year I've done, uh, tons of, 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 under the microscope, uh, video analysis, electronic timing, 25s, 35s, um, at, at varying levels of fatigue, freshness, preparedness, um, and I was still able to hit X, Y times over and over again. So um, just the, the approach and, and I guess maybe just how I work, just having that volume of consistent, uh, I guess, success over the year within training. Um, just allowed me after that heat to just be very at peace with what I was doing. And it was just, all I had to do was dive in, get into that, that form of my stroke and just let it flow and, and, and hold on to it. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's what the, 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 the semi was. The final was uh, fantastic. A little bit more nervous for the final because it's the final. Um, but yeah, uh, it was just probably a product mostly of just how I operated over the last year it's very much in line with who I am as a person the the freedom of having the 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 control over what I was doing um the experimentation with what I was doing in the water as well and the and the 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 fun and the journey that that was um and the times I was able to repeat throughout the year all of that just culminated after the heat to basically make make it feel like um it was just another another dive 25 at, at QAS on a Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It, look, I'm getting, I'm getting chills because mm. I, I can hear the kind of the excitement in your voice when you talk about, mm. you know, your preparation and I can, I can feel like, you know, you've got this really clear intention. And when you set you're at peace at a swimming competition, that's, that's pretty rare, mm. you know, to, to yeah. be clear minded standing, you know, standing behind the block. So it's, um, yeah, we you know so many learnings from from today. And in terms of uh, for, for everyone listening to you know try to find what works for you as an individual. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's you know we're all so different. So you know you can I think being I think there's great there's some learnings that we we've had from like we said from 30 years 20 years ago. But now you know I'm excited about the future of our sport with mm-hmm. innovation from people like yourself. So. Um, but like moving forward, is there anything that you'd want to to change in the next preparation, or you've, you've you know some key kind of uh, data that's come back to you that you want to sort of implement, or any drastic changes, or just you've you've got a plan you're going to stick to? Um, so so the nine months of this prep leading up to Worlds, the first few months of that was pretty much just let's try this type of. Uh, resistance. Let's try this type of uh, session for a block for a week, see how I respond, kind of get an understanding of, of all that. And then by the time I got to February, March, I started to settle in and get a really good understanding of what worked, what what still worked, but wasn't as effective or maybe might be better at a different point in time. Um, and so really from now into next year, it's just taking everything I've learned from all the different things we did and putting it together in a, in a very nicely coherent year of work. 
um, sort mm. of compounds on top of each other and basically just try and, um, yeah, compound the, the progress I made and, and see where that takes me. Um, I'd like to get my dive a little bit quicker. Uh, I was 522 to the 15, um, which for me was only like, 0.02 off the best dive I've ever done. Uh, but relative to the other guys, I think um, I think Ryan was 508, Jordan 510 in that in that race alone. I mean, Caleb's been 49, Ben's been in the 50s, Flo's been in the 50s. So I'd, I'd really like to get that down into the 51 something, um, mm. and then yeah, just compound what I'm doing. Um, what I'll be I'll be 30 next year, um, which in some sense feels old, but then like one of my favorite stories in swimming was Brent Hayden in, in, in Tokyo. He had seven years Ooh. off, was back for 18 mm. months and he dropped a dropped a 47.9 at 38 leading off the relay. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was 21 in the 50. And I mean, he was training five times a week. He was doing it very mm. differently. Um, and so I just see like that that age gap. That's that's nine years away as well. So it's a long time. Mm. Um, I look at the, the top times done, say, in track in the 200 and the 400. The, the age bandwidth start it's like you got your early 20s but then you've got people michael jo- johnson i think got the 400 world record at 32 i think and then you've got people yeah into their 30s posting mm. top times and i mean like if, if you could if you compare athletics and swimming like with men we develop into our strength and peak into our strength into our 30s and right now we've only got guys in their 20s kind of doing pbs in, in freestyle except for outliers here and there but like swimming, freestyle, it's much more of a strength-based sport compared to athletics. Athletics is fast twitch. Uh, the ground contact times like 0.1 of a second when their legs are striking. 53, we've got like half a second to pull in the water when we're at 60 stroke rate. And like, what? Well, that's that's 5% more time to apply strength in the water in your stroke, which is puts you a little bit further up the force side of the force velocity curve. So if we're getting stronger into our 30s and the track guys are still able to do really good times in 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 their 30s late 20s then swimming should no doubt have people really up against their pbs doing best times into their late 20s into their 30s as well it just makes sense so yeah i'm just excited to see where it goes yeah i've got one one little question that's probably more for the not i guess swimming fanatics and maybe not competitive swimmers and you know, how do you, like, where not everyone has access to sports science and data and, you know, obviously, you know, you're at the top level, but how can someone with, you know, say no, someone wants to improve their general swimming or, uh, you know, even at, at, as, at a junior level, say implement some, let, let's, in a general sense, you know, combine, say, a theory with it, the way it feels and how do you sort of try to, you know, they might be looking up to you and, Saying I want to want to do something similar to, yeah. to what Cam is doing. It is, you know, how can you know how can the uh, you know I guess people are not at that, that that level as you sort of implement this sort of the science base and feel for the sport. Um, effect like I'd say figure out what your goal is. It, it say let's just use the the fifty three for example. That's your goal. Really understand what the fifty three is. What you're doing with it. And I mean, at, at a simplest form, try and do as much as you can, as fast as you can under the constraints of the 53. Like mm-hmm. try and sprint as often as you can. Do your 25s, do your 35s, do all that 50s. Just repeat, get as much volume as you can under that. Get stronger mm-hmm. within the, the stroke. Develop your technique. Um, like for example, uh, this is just one small example of a lot of stuff you can do, but you throw, get get a finesse parachute, put it, put a the red one on. You do a thirty five push, and what that might take seventeen to twenty seconds. And if you take a fifty three, say for example, to the you take out the time to the fifteen because you're not really swimming there. It's more underwater. You might do like one or two strokes. So going from the fifteen to the fifty, you might have what 20, 21, 22 seconds of swimming if you're that mid twenty range, or a little bit longer if you're up in the higher twenties, but 35 with a red parachute is pretty much the exact same amount of time you're doing a 53 for, but mm. you're doing it with larger resistance. You're, you're teaching your body to exert more force per stroke. You're teaching your body to 
to unleash or like yeah unleash as much energy per second as you can relative to body weight swimming um and 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 just follow that principle get stronger within the stroke uh and and sprint as much as you can work on your technique um yeah that's pretty much as yeah, simply as yeah. I put it. the yeah. sails of the red thin uh, finish <laughs> parachute are going to go through the roof from yeah. after this after this podcast. well you can go to you can go to brethawk.com and get a program that is going to work for sprinting as well so. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and you can come and do it at clint soon yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're figuring it out no, look, you know seriously cam you know what i hope uh, comes from this is this is this belief of or this questioning of how much yardage did you do? How, how far did you swim? How much yardage did you do? And I hope we can flip it around to how much swimming at specific speed did you do this week? I think I, I, that's what I hope the mindset shifts to instead of like, you know, how far did you swim? Total volume. How far did you swim at, at race specific speed this week? And if we can kind of change that narrative to to make it make swimming more like that, mm. I think that that would be something that I would love to accomplish. What, what do you hope to get out of this, you think? I think, obviously, I want to swim fast. Um, that goes without saying. But I think, like, the position I was in between 2016 and, and, and late last year, um, with knowing what I know now, that was totally avoidable. And I, really, it'd just be nice to understand what's going on, put it out into the world, and a lot of other swimmers who are in the same situation that I was in, um, they have an opportunity to go down a different path and maybe improve that relationship they have with the sport um, and to, yeah, just improve people's um, journey through swimming, particularly as they get into that older, the older mm. stage of their career um, mm. when the, tr the traditional approach, it's not quite working how it used to, you kind of need something different. And, and yeah, I, I just hope that uh, in the future, it goes a long way to helping people just get more, out of the sport for longevity yeah. maybe yeah. maybe have a better ability to reach their potential this within the sprinting world of course um mm -hmm. and also just to to be like a, a a little a little pocket of 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 movement that kind of pushes the sport forward that one step so that you can kind of yeah continue that momentum of, of what is a long history of of world swimming um like i wouldn't be where i am without the, the pockets of guys around the world over the, over the, the last decade doing what they've been doing and, and, and how that's been really different with, with what Ben's been doing over in Gloria and, and whatnot and, and James Gibson with Flo and Ben and you and Bruno. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be here if, if that example wasn't there in the past. And it's like, like Newton, Newton's quote, it's like I, I was able to see further by standing on the shoulders of giants. And that's kind of, how I've I've been doing this in a sense like I wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. So yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, mate. Well, look, look it was it's great for me to see um, the the competitive racing at Worlds was just out of this world. It was it was a great meet yeah. overall, but but I saw some dominating swims, and they came from older athletes. They came from you in the fifty free. They came from Ruda in the fifty breast. Sarah they came from Sarah Sostrom in the fifty fly, fifty free. I mean. Just older athletes, not winning events, dominating events and taking this new perspective of being in control of your program more, having more say, um, you know, and and just uh, the different approach that I'm sure all of you in a similar sense of taking to swimming at speed and swimming, swimming fast and then dominating the world. It was really refreshing to see. Um, so listen, man, we're again, yeah. we're just we're just huge fans and we want. We want nothing but um, continued success for you. So, um, you know, good luck over the next preparation. Hopefully we can we can check in again maybe after Paris and have another conversation yeah. and, and give yeah. a bit more detail again, you know. Let's do it in person, yeah. mate. Yeah, thanks, yeah. For, thanks yeah. for sharing yeah. your insight, mate, and uh, good luck with the preparation. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries, mate. All right, hang on. We'll catch up in a sec.